Hey, welcome back to another Patreon lesson. Um, as you'll notice, I'm in a different room now. Um, I just got done moving uh, in the last week or two, and so I've been setting up the new space, um, which I'm super excited uh, to show. I know in this frame you can only kind of see like the desk area, um, but I'm really excited about this room. Um, I'm definitely still getting acquainted with it um, and still kind of dialing things in and just you know, I'm changing the workflow a little bit of how I do things in here, but um, I think overall it's going to have quite a few more um, advantages than the other space I was in. So I'm super excited to show uh, the new space. I've just got a few more extra little things uh, coming in uh, before I before it's like finished uh, for now. So anyways, I'm excited to be in a new house and a new space um, and get going on more lessons and more recording. Um, so for today's lesson, what I thought I would do would uh, be to talk about using a subkick microphone in your drum recording. Um, so I think most people are probably familiar with what I'm talking about, but if you're not, a subkick is basically um, a speaker of sorts. It could be a guitar speaker, it could be an actual sub um, speaker for like a subwoofer, it could be any, any speaker. Um, but I do think an actual sub speaker from what I've heard works the best. Um, and it's basically wired in reverse to act as a microphone. Um, I think the first like company to really, um, kind of popular popularize this thing was Yamaha. Um, they've sold their sub kick microphone for quite a while now and it's pretty pricey. Um, you've probably seen them. It looks like an actual drum and it's kind of got a mesh front head, but inside is the actual uh, speaker element that actually is the microphone. I think the outside is just an aesthetic thing. Um, but since then, other companies have made um, subkick microphones and named them different things. And then a lot of people have actually just created their own with speakers they've had laying around or um, had a friend like wire one up for them or something. Uh, for me, I actually got mine more recently um, from another person that I followed on Instagram. Um, and he was making some and uh, even offered like two different cone uh, materials. One was uh, paper and one was like a poly material. And he kind of uh, displayed out the differences of, in tone and um, ran like a small batch and, and people could buy them. So I bought mine off him and I chose the paper version, which is the more traditional uh, subkick sound as I remember. Um so everybody's kind of got their own version of it, and that's also another thing that makes this type of microphone pretty fun is that there's kind of like a lot of different variables, you know, based on the speaker you use um, and the size of the speaker and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, mine is literally just a speaker that the guy had put a mount on for a mic stand and just put a XLR attached to it. So it's not... Uh, aesthetically the most pleasing thing ever, but it's small, it, it mounts to a mic stand, and it gets the job done. Um, and so I've really been enjoying it. Um, it was kind of one of those things where I knew once I got one, I was going to think like, how did I ever <laughs> not have one? Because um, it's just so convenient for low end and just it's such a unique sound. Um, but I finally got one and have been experimenting with it here at the at the new space, and so um, I thought I'd show some different ways that I've been utilizing it. Um, a lot of these ideas I've heard from other people and kind of started to do my own take on them. Um, but I thought it would be beneficial just because I think most people think of the sub kick uh, use traditionally as just in front of the kick drum on the outside head, uh, which is. Oh, you know, a lot of the way you'll probably be using it, but I've kind of came up with a few other options uh, and creative ways to get some unique sounds uh, with the with the sub kick mic. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show you the playing portion. There's basically going to be three different uh, little clips. Uh, the first is going to be a more traditional setup where it's just kind of on the outside of the drum of the bass drum, uh, you know, a couple inches off the resonant head. Um, and then there's going to be another video where I'm basically using it like a room mic, like a low-end room mic. So it, it was pulled back from the primary kick drum, maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 feet-ish. Um, and then I also put another bigger marcher kick out in front of my main kick drum to kind of create some resonance. Um, and then the last video is going to be it in kind of the knee position, like right over the kick drum, kind of like that mono 
Uh, some people call it a crotch mic. Some people call it over the kicks. I call it knee mic most of the time um, and kind of using it in a tighter context in that position. So I want to show you those um, all with processing and kind of everything that I did to kind of, you know, encapsulate the sound I was going for with each. And then we'll come back and jump in the session so that I can show you each um, each use of each instance, I should say, of the sub kick uh, soloed and then kind of talk about a little bit of how I processed them. Um, I think I pretty much covered everything. If you've got any other questions, um, as always, just let me know. Um, I've been loving using the sub kick. I'd highly suggest getting one, even just for creating a nice low end in your kick. It, it does make it quite a bit easier um, than using like a condenser or whatever, um, which I've had great results with as well. And you can obviously run all three. You could do like a dynamic mic, a sub uh, or a large diaphragm condenser and a sub and kind of have each one of them doing their own thing. Uh, but for this, I wanted to focus on the sub kick. Um, like I said, if you've got any questions, let me know. And if not, I'll see you next time.